Hello everyone. In this presentation, I'll be talking about metabolic evaluation in urolithiasis. I consider this a very important aspect in dealing with kidney stones. Why? Because approximately 50% of the patients who experience a first episode of stones and are not treated, and by which I mean they're not treated in terms of metabolic evaluation in order to address the issues or address the risk factors causing them the kidney stones. 50% uh, of these patients will have a recurrence of the stones in the next 5 to 10 years, and around 80% of these patients will have at least one metabolic alteration. So, by doing an initial metabolic evaluation and uh, addressing the risk factors, we can potentially uh, reduce significant amount of workload in urolithiasis, and more than this, we can help the patient to reduce their symptoms and improve the, improve the quality of life. This is how I will take this presentation. Firstly, I will define what are the risk factors in urolithiasis. Secondly, what should be an initial evaluation, and then how we'll conduct a metabolic evaluation, particularly how to collect. 24-hour urine sample, and most importantly, how to act on the results. Lastly, what should be the follow-up? The first step is to determine patient's risk of developing further stone formation so that resources are directed to where they are likely to have the most benefit. Low-risk patients are the ones that have first ever event without any risk factors, and then the risk factors are like family history, recurrent urinary tract infections, obesity due to secondary lifestyle, type 2 diabetes mellitus, primary hyperparathyroidism, gout, nephrocalcinosis, distal renal tubular acidosis, bone uh, or gastrointestinal diseases. High-risk patients are the ones that have first ever event with one or more than one risk factor. They are recurrent stone former, they are having multiple or bilateral renal stones. Uh, they are children or adolescent or having solitary kidney. All patients diagnosed with kidney or urotelic stone should undergo a screening evaluation with the detailed dietary and medical history, followed by serum tests and urinalysis. This history should include a detailed stone episode history, history of urinary tract infections, details of any anatomical abnormalities in the urinary tract system, such as PUJO or Horsey kidney. This history should include drug history as certain drugs like corticosteroids increase enteric calcium absorption, leading to hypercalciuria. Uh, chemotherapeutic agents will cause breakdown of malignant cells, causing hypo hypercalciuria. Any previous bowel resection or inflammatory bowel disease causing intestinal hyperoxyluria. Then, in terms of blood, uh, uh, blood investigations, one can do FPC, full blood count, to detect any undiagnosed hematological malignancies. In electrolytes, one can look for hypokalemia in distal renal tubular acidosis. Seam calcium and phosphate would be increased in hyperparathyroidism and hyperuricemia in patients with uric acid stones. Now, after conducting initial evaluation for all the patients, if we find that the patient is a high risk for stone formation, which earlier we talked patient uh, with first episode and having a risk factor one or more than one, solitary kidney, multiple or bilateral stones, nephrocalcinosis, uh, they should be conducted a metabolic evaluation, uh, which are, uh, which is based on uh, certain uh, extra blood investigations and 24-hour uh, urine sample collection. In bloods, uh, uh, one can add albumin to have corrected calcium um, and uh, phosphate, magnesium, vitamin D as well. 24-hour uh, urine sample is also an important. Uh, uh, aspect of metabolic evaluation. Why? Because composition of urine determines the type of stones for which the patient is at risk of uh, stone formation. 
uh, this specific composition can be influenced by diet, metabolic activity, lifestyle, and medical history. The primary objective is in screening uh, a patient with the stones is to understand why his or her 24-hour urine has this concern or specific composition. Is 24-hour urine sample correctly collected or no? This can be assessed by urine creatinine levels. Uh, it is constant with reference of 20 mg per kg for both sexes and um, or both genders. Uh, values lower than this may indicate inadequate collection. Um, other than this, uh, information should be given to patient in written form as the uh, patient might not remember uh, all the information how to do it. Specifically, uh, it has to be uh, whenever the patient decides to collect 24-hour urine sample uh, on that specific day, the first more the first void in the morning should be discarded, and then rest of the uh, 24 hours, whatever urine he or she passes, should be collected in the jar, and uh, the first void next morning should be uh, collected in the same jar as well. The standard in United Kingdom is uh, for the patient to provide two 24-hour uh, urine collection, one in a bottle with hydrochloric acid, looking for 24-hour uh, urine calcium, oxalate, phosphate, citrate, and magnesium, and one in plain bottle, uh, looking for 24-hour uric acid, electrolytes, uh, and 24-hour uh, urinary volume as well. Other than this, 24-hour urine sample should be collected with preservatives or stored at 4 degrees centigrade to prevent risk of spontaneous crystallization and bacterial growth. If the initial evaluation and metabolic evaluation for a patient is normal, uh, then uh, one can uh, provide general recommendations like fluid intake. So fluid intake should be encouraged and uh, it should be 2.2 uh, to 2.5 liter a day. As uh, decreased risk of stone formation has been uh, noted uh, with uh, increased fluid intake. Some, some drinks are associated with high risk of stone disease, including tea, wine, carbonated, sugar added soft drinks frequently containing fructose, as fructose may increase urinary excretion of calcium, oxalate, and urate, and is associated with high risk of stone uh, kidney stone formation. Then sodium chloride intake should be restricted uh, to no greater than four to five gram per day, as high sodium chloride intake increases urinary calcium excretion, but low sodium diet can be uh, very challenging um, as with availability and popularity of processed foods uh, sodium is added to virtually any industrial uh, industrial uh, transformed food intake of animal uh, protein should be restricted to 0.8 to 1 gram per kg per day uh, fruits and vegetables intake should be um, encouraged or recommended uh, intake of uh, foods that are rich in oxalate should be limited as well uh, Calcium intake should be 1 to 1.5 gram per day. As low calcium diet leads to increased uh, intestinal absorption of free oxalate, resulting in oxaluria and urinary supersaturation with calcium oxalate, favoring in the uh, nucleation process and crystal growth. Despite of all general recommendation, if there is still persistence or recurrence of uh, uh, kidney stones, then uh, empirical treatment with thiazide, uh, diuretics, and potassium citrate can be recommended as well. As uh, thiazide diuretics can decrease urinary calcium excretion and uh, it can reduce the rate of stone for me, uh, uh, recurrence with an evidence of uh, 1B, evidence level of 1B. Ideally, 24-hour uh, urinary metabolic evaluation and uh, metabolic alteration can be referred to metabolic specialist. However, the waiting list for 
which is uh, very long. Uh, we'll talk through different parameters on 24-hour urine sample collection and their interpretation and uh, therapeutic measures. So first of all, urinary pH, the normal range is 6.0 to 6.5. If it is low, uh, then you can recommend urinary alkalization by potassium citrate with this uh, uh, dose 15 to 30 mL equivalent every 12 hours uh, with meals. Uh, if it tastes bad, you can recommend the patient to dilute it in uh, certain drinks. Uh, if it is not well tolerated, then the alternative option is potassium bicarbonate with a dose of 20 to 25 mL equivalent twice a day or sodium bicarbonate with 4.5 gram per day. Second parameter to look for is urinary volume. Um, normal range should be 2.5 per uh, liter per day. If for some reason it's slow, uh, then patients should be counseled and uh, educated on enough hydration. Next is urinary citrate, the normal values for which is greater than 300 milligram per 24 hours. If for some reason it is found low, you can again uh, recommend alkaline diet such as uh, DASH diet, which is a plant-based uh, diet or potassium citrate. Uh, minded that you need to monitor potassium levels when prescribing potassium citrate. Uh, then a urinary calcium level, uh, if the normal range for it is less than 250 milligram per hour. Uh, if it is um, high, possible causes could be primary hyperparathyroidism, milk alkylase syndrome, high sodium diet, therapeutic measures uh, that can be taken uh, uh, for this are normal calcium intake. Uh, reduce sodium chloride intake. If it's uh, if it persists, then you can uh, try thiazide diuretic as well, uh, with the dose of 20 to 50 milligram per day, and monitor um, regular potassium, uric acid, blood glucose, lipid profile. And uh, the last option would be you can uh, try potassium citrate as well. Urinary magnesium with normal values should be greater than 50 mg per 24 hour. Uh, if it is found low, uh, then magnesium supplements can be prescribed like uh, 200 to 400 milligram per day. Uric acid levels uh, normal range is uh, less than 650 milligram per 24 hours. Uh, if it is found high, then uh, animal uh, protein intake should be restricted as we talked earlier. Or, and alternatively, you can uh, alkaline the urine with uh, potassium citrate or alternatives like potassium bicarbonate or sodium bicarbonate. In the presence of uh, high uh, uric acid levels in urine and blood, you can always add on allopurinol as well. Uh, then urinary sodium, uh, normal values are 40 to 220 milli equivalent per day. If uh, they are noted high, then uh, the therapeutic measures can be taken sodium chloride restriction in the diet. Urinary oxalate uh, with normal values of less than 40 milligram per 24 hours. Uh, if they are found high, then you can limit uh, excessive intake of oxalate and vitamin C. If there is uh, any enteric etiology, uh, low fat uh, dairy products and uh, calcium and magnesium supplements uh, can be recommended. In case or uh, in terms of uh, primary hyperoxaluria, you can uh, prescribe pyridoxine 5 to 20 milligram per kg per day. After starting therapeutic measures uh, for metabolic alteration based on findings from metabolic evaluation or 24-hour urine uh, analysis, urine sample analysis, the first follow-up is recommended 8 to 12 weeks time. And uh, based on the follow-up when normalization occurred, then the patient should have follow-up uh, every 12 months uh, with scans to confirm no recurrence of uh, kidney stones. Here I end my presentation on metabolic evaluation in urolithiasis and I hope 
it was helpful in understanding basic and general concepts of this topic. Thank you.